presents a Bible class on the fundamental basics for victorious Christian living. Establish a strong foundation for conquering the trials and temptations of daily life. Increase your faith and learn to use the powerful weapons of spiritual warfare as you listen to Christian Living 101 with Pastor Gene Applegate. Well, good morning, everyone. It's good to be back with you with Christian Living 101. I want to apologize to you for having a couple of reruns on in uh, the recent uh, past. Our equipment broke down, and we sort of had a problem getting repairs for it, and uh, it just took time to get the computer back up and running, and so uh, that explains why you probably saw uh, the re play last Sunday. Today we're going to continue from the subject we were on at our last taping, and that was drawing near unto God. I want to talk to you about that, and a lot of people have said, well, Pastor, I know that uh, the Bible says uh, that, and we'll probably use that scripture in just a little bit, draw near to God, and He'll draw near to you. And we understand that, and we know that, but how do we do that? Well, we want to talk a little bit about not only how we do it, uh, but we want to go a little bit further into the thought about when and how important it is for us to always be conscious of drawing near unto the Lord. In other words, drawing near to the Lord doesn't happen by accident. It happens because we desire to be in His presence and long for His attention and for the anointing of His Holy Spirit upon our lives. We long for the feeding that comes to us by reading His Word, which, by the way, we're reminded Jesus said that He is the bread of life. And again, He said that He is the water of life. And we're told that if we eat of Him and drink of Him, that we'll never uh, be hungry again, we'll never thirst again. And a lot of people say, oh, Oh, Pastor, that's ridiculous. I'm hungry every day and I get thirsty all the time. But are you hungry for the things of God? That's what it's talking about. Are you hungry for fellowship with the Lord? Are you thirsty for the reviving flow of the living waters of God that flows from His throne through the Spirit and through the Word of God? And that's what we're talking about. And so I want to take you to a scripture today that is found over in the Old Testament. And we want to read it to you, if we might. We want to go to 1 Samuel 14, verse 36. Now, as we begin reading this verse, it doesn't seem to be talking about drawing near unto God. But I'm going to read it, and uh, we're going to analyze it a little bit and take a particularly important point. 1 Samuel 14, verse 36. And Saul said, Let us go down after the Philistines by night and spoil them until the morning light, and let us not leave a man of them. And they said, Do whatsoever seemeth good unto thee. Then said the priest, Let us draw near hither unto God. Now, you and I know that in the days in which we live, we are constantly being bombarded by the attacks of Satan. And uh, we're always in some sort of a spiritual war. In fact, every day that we live, we face some kind of spiritual battle. And oftentimes, that includes physical, mental, emotional, intellectual battle that we go through moment by moment and day by day in many instances. And so it's important for us to come to that point in our life wherein we acknowledge that yes we are indeed at war being a child of God, the Son of God, having been born again into the kingdom of God through uh, repentance and baptism for the remission of sin, according to Acts 2.38, as Peter spoke unto those who asked of him what they needed to do to be saved, uh, we've now come to the place where recognizing that we have changed sides, as it were, once being on the side of the enemy, unregenerated, unredeemed, uh, unaware of spiritual things, we live our life according to the desires and the ambitions of the flesh. Now, oftentimes, there was good moral values included in that life, but then again, there were those times where we walked in sin and did things that we knew were not appropriate uh, to be done in righteousness unto God and even unto ourselves and others. And then all 
also we recognize that being locked in that condition of uh, the law of sin and death, that we didn't have to commit any kind of a sin to be a sinner. We inherited that uh, from our forefathers. And so uh, we had to come to the point where we recognized that if we were going to have a change of course in our life, and if we were going to inherit eternal life, that we had to come to that point of redemption through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we did that through the act of repentance and uh, baptism in water for the remission of sin. Now, understanding that and knowing that, we go on then with the fact that we fight a daily battle simply because we are sons of God, children of God, daughters of the Lord, and uh, whatever your gender may be, and we find ourselves in that position where because we're on the side of righteousness, uh, we have been purified by the blood of Jesus and walk uh, free from the law of sin and death, that now we are in constant uh, battle uh, before the Lord uh, against Satan and the powers and the forces of evil. Well, now, such was the case in uh, the day of Saul and the Philistines. Philistines, you'll remember, were going to destroy Israel. Their great desire was to just grind them into the earth and wipe them off of the face of the earth in this life. They didn't want anything left of Israel. And then we find Saul now coming to that point in this portion of Scripture, where I mean, he says, uh, we've got the advantage now. We can overcome. Uh, we're going to, to do warfare against the enemy, the Philistines, and we're going to go down by night, and we're going to slip into their camp, and we're going to wreak havoc upon them until the dawn. We're not going to leave one man alive, and we're going to destroy them all. And then all at once we find that suddenly there is a spiritual note that comes to bear. The priest speaks up, and he says, Yes, you do what you want to do, but in effect he's saying, But first, let's draw near unto God. And you know, church, sometimes we try to do spiritual warfare on, in our own strength. We walk in our own understanding and our own ability. We're limited to the resources that we have in uh, the realm of natural understanding. And so may I just encourage you to do as the priest instructed Saul to do, that is before you ever begin to go into battle and to do warfare against Satan and his hordes, that you come to that point where you draw near unto God. Now, why do I need to draw near unto God when going into battle? Well, first of all, we need to recognize that God gave us armor that we're to put on and we're to wear very consistently day by day in the sense that we have been given the warfare tools, uh, the armament, if you please, to come against the enemy and to bring victory. In other words, without God, we don't get anything done and we can't win any battles. We have to have God's support. Now, if we're going to go into battle and we know we do, then we need to seek the Lord. We need to come near unto Him. Uh, we need to come to the point where not only do we put on the armor, but we need the direction and guidance of the Holy Spirit. You see, Satan is the author of deceit. He's very, very capable of coming against us in ways that we don't see or understand. As a result of that, we need to come to the point wherein we look unto the Lord and we say, Lord, you know what Satan's up to. You know what his particular effort against me is today. And so I need to be directed by your word and by your Holy Spirit. And as we seek after the Lord and draw nigh unto him, uh, we do that as we learned last time in our last study, that we do that by reading the Word, eating and drinking of the Word, and by taking the Holy Spirit and accepting the work that the Holy Spirit does within us as sons and daughters of God. And so what I'm saying is, if we don't have the covering of God's Spirit and the authority of His Word and His name and walk in the righteousness of our, our only uh, Lord and Savior, Savior Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of the living God, if we don't walk in that realm, we're defeated before we start. And so we need to understand that if we're going to have victory in battle, it's going to be as the Lord goes with us 